Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. You know, today we're going to go ahead and continue our look at The World Upside Down, a biblical earth documentary. Today we're going to hit the biggest problem that they have to face, and that is all the photographs from space. Going all the way back to 1946 with some early V2 launches from White Sands. Now, one of the best images that we have to prove the spherical Earth is the blue marble photograph, which was taken on film from Apollo 17. And I saw Apollo 17 launch into space with my 10-year-old eyes. So let's cue up the music and get going. And as for the images which NASA has produced, they have all been created through Photoshop. Here's a testimony from Robert Simmon, a NASA CGI and Photoshop designer, admitting that the images of the globe are artificially created. You know, I really hate to be a party pooper here. Actually, no, I don't. But Photoshop had not been invented in 1972 when that blue marble photograph was taken. Now, what Simmons is talking about here is looking at photographs from low Earth orbit. Satellites in low Earth orbit, in general, cannot see the entire globe. That did not occur until we started getting satellites such as Imawari 8 that are out far enough that they can see an entire hemisphere of the Earth at once. However, they're geostationary and they only look at one section of the Earth. Now, when you are dealing with a series of photographs of an area, stitching them together like a jigsaw puzzle does not mean that they don't represent something that's real. Just as a jigsaw puzzle comes together to form an actual photograph or image, we can take a series of photographs of an object and stitch them together to get a larger picture of the object. That doesn't mean that it's not real. It doesn't mean that somehow there's trickery going on. It's simply a photographic technique. Now, one thing that you can do to prove this is go grab your iPhone. Put the camera on panoramic and take a picture. It'll tell you to bring the iPhone around like this, and then when it's done, it'll process those pictures and create a very long picture that covers an entire horizon for you. The same thing happens with photographs of the Earth from space. So let's go see what Rob Simmons has to say. Then in 2002, Blue Marble 2.0, NASA's Rob Simmons made this. Now I'm gonna stop you right there for a second. This is Blue Marble 2.0, which is a more current version of it. The original blue marble photograph was taken on film in 1972. We are not talking about that picture. We are talking about a subsequent one. That picture was not manipulated. It's taken on film. And we have the negatives for it and the people that took it. And it had wide appeal too. For example, it ended up as the default background on the iPhone. I didn't even know until I bought an iPhone um, and turned it on and kind of did a little happy dance. Simmons' job is... It's primarily taking data and making pictures out of it. That's what this is, a composite of data sets from several different instruments translated into a picture. Now, again, I hate to be the party pooper here, but you know that all digital photographs are nothing but data. They're ones and zeros. All right. You know that, right? The, to us, the really cool thing was the data set. Up until that point, there was no realistic color map of the globe anywhere. So the land layer here comes from the moderate resolution imaging spectral radiometer aboard Terra. And the tricky part here was the weather. So we actually had to take clouds out. They stashed the clouds for later, went onto the ocean. That came from an instrument that measures phytoplankton in the sea. Where it was low, I colored it dark blue because they're low mostly in mid-oceans. And then where it was a little bit higher, it was like a little bit brighter green. Then add the clouds back in. There's a small problem with it because there's a very slight gap in between each orbit. So some of those are painted on. It is photoshopped, but it it's, has to be. 
Then? There was another layer to sort of simulate the atmosphere. And then there's this little bright spot. It's called the specular highlight. So it's the reflection of sunlight off of water. Those are the pieces, but you can't just slap them all together. It just didn't look realistic. It looks kind of flat, or the clouds are sort of too see-through. So I just hit Command-Z a lot. There's artistry to creating the world. What I imagine it to be. Um, Unfortunately, I'm not an astronaut. (laughs) I've never been to space. But I've looked at these images over and over again, trying to sort of get the essence of it. Well, you know, one thing that I wanted to add, just for completeness, is the stories that you see on the internet about all the photos from the moon of the Earth being fake. And what they do is they put up an image like this. And as you notice, there's a rectangle around the Earth. There's clearly a dividing point in the background. And there's a lot of pixelations around the astronaut and the lunar lander. Are these evidence that these photos are faked? Well, yes, it is. Because, first of all, none of the moon photos from the NASA website have that rectangle around them. They also don't have a split background. But there are some artifacts that can come up when you take a very high-resolution photograph and you compress it using JPG compression down to something that you can release in a press release or something that can be downloaded quickly. So I'm going to let Grader Sapien, who did an excellent presentation on this not long ago, This is his field, and I'm going to go ahead and defer to his expertise on this, and I think that you'll gain something from it. So, the link to his video, of course, will be in the description. So, let's go to the uh, image that they gave, go through the process, make sure that they weren't faking what they did, which I know they weren't. I've I've seen this before. Um, So, first, let's reproduce what they did. So, I'm going to go to the link that they gave, which is this one right here, uh, for this image, and I'm going to just download this puppy uh, onto my hard drive right there. Now I'm going to take this image, I'm going to bring it over here into Photoshop, and here it is. And I'm just going to do what they did. So I'm just going to tweak the levels, and nothing happens at first, and then as we get closer and closer toward uh, zero here, uh, archives start to appear. You can see archives are beginning to appear around, that little shape starting to happen. I'm going to go all the way down, and then boom. As you can see, that's the exact same result that they got. I'm gonna say okay, and I'm gonna zoom in here so you can see this kind of geometric um, thing happening over here. So they weren't faking what they did when they they did this process. And that's the only reason why why I did this. So I'm just gonna go go back uh, there, and I'm gonna undo that. So, but that's not a big deal. Question is, can I show that it wasn't done by cutting and pasting something in there? So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing. Now, I don't know why they go to this image here. I don't particularly, you know, it's obviously been processed. So I'm going to go to the NASA video, the NASA image archives, and pull up the exact same uh, shot. And so that's this one right here. Right here. Now, it's a higher quality one. Uh, there's more detail. It hasn't the the levels are obviously different on it. Uh, hasn't been processed as much. It's got to be processed a little bit. It was put on the web, but it hasn't been processed to the same degree. So this one should be a good example of uh, how things work. Uh, so I'm going to take this one, and I'm going to bring it down onto my machine. So this one right here, uh, it's got HR on the end of it, and I'm going to bring that into Photoshop. Okay, and first just to see what this one looks like without tweaking it all is I'm going to uh, do the levels just like the other one did. So I'm going to bring it in, 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 and here we are. Now, as you can see, that's very different than uh, what the other uh, image did. This has more uniform noise, kind of glowing noise around it. There's a little bit of a little flex here and there, because this was processed for the web to a certain degree. But it doesn't have those geometric uh, shapes, that clear border of something having been cropped uh, and put in there. It reflects, actually, very closely to what uh, the other people said is what a real image should look like. Look at that uniform noise all over the place, more glowing around the objects. That's what we see here. This actually reflects what a real 
image should look like. But let me show, my point is to prove that it wasn't for cropping, it's because of something else. So I have to, in order to prove that, I have to go through this, the process and show that it can be done uh, to get that same effect. So first, let me undo this. Now, the other thing we have to notice is that this image from the website that was used in the video uh, is only 1,041 pixels wide, while this one used on the NASA website is 2,300 and something pixels wide. So I'm going to bring this thing down to 1,041 pixels wide. There. And so let's uh, bring that guy up. So visually they're about the same size now. Okay, now I'm going to save this out. I'm going to save it and I'm just going to call it B because that'll be easier to remember. And then I'm going to use JPEG compression. Save. Now, how much compression should I give this thing? Well, let's take a real quick look. And if we look at the original image from the uh, video, it has, it's a file size of 83K compared to my file size of 665K. So I'm gonna bring my file size down to my new picture. I'm gonna compress it so it's smaller, so get it closer. Uh, right now, the file size, if I were to leave it at nine, uh, would be 196K. So I'm gonna compress it a little bit more than that. That's 131 I'm gonna bring oh 104 let's let's give them a little benefit of doubt we'll put it at level 5 here uh, 115 K all right I'm also gonna uh, give it uh, so here we have our new compressed file right here uh, now let's try that same action so I'm gonna go levels and I'm gonna start tweaking the white point Bring it down, bring it down, bring it down. And as you can see, as we get down here, boom, there we go. Let's hit OK. Look at that. It's a very geometric type area around it. It's not the exact same one because I didn't go through the same processing that uh, the other image did. I don't know what processing they did. I don't know what the real compression level was. But you can see just from tweaking the levels, and giving a JPEG compression to get it down to a decent size, these archives showed up. Well, as Greater Sapien demonstrated, this type of artifact around the Earth is a normal effect of processing a high-resolution photograph and compressing it with JPG compression down to a file that's much smaller and easier to transmit. Now, you may recall from the beginning of this segment I said that this image right here was evidence of photoshopping, and it is. But the thing is, it's not photoshopped by NASA. Let me point it out. If you look at the Earth, you can see those artifacts around the rim of the Earth. There is a rectangle photoshopped in on top of that. And that photoshop did not come from NASA. That photoshop came from the individual trying to promote the narrative that the space landing was fake and photos of the Earth from space are fake. In other words, he photoshopped a picture to show that it was photoshopped. Now here's a problem that I have with that. There were many people that made great sacrifices and some even lost their lives in our exploration of space. A cheap trick like this to support a flat Earth or creationist narrative disrespects those people that lost their lives and made those sacrifices especially since one of the commandments says something about not bearing false witness. So, this is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Make sure you hit the little like and subscribe down there and click the bell so you get notified of future videos. Thank you very much for stopping by, and we'll see you again soon.